outside, please, teaching staff, if you wouldn't mind moving outside. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. This is quite an attendance. We've exhausted every single chair that we have in the school for this purpose. But it's wonderful that you're all able to be here with us. Thank you for your attendance, parents and guests. A tradition that we weren't able to maintain last year is the procession of our staff. Uh, we're quite happy to be able to reignite that today. So if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you, staff. Thank you. The purpose, the purpose of that tradition, I suppose, is in recognition and acknowledgement of the effort staff go to and have gone through with the exiting cohort of Year 12. For some of those staff, they have sons and daughters within the cohort. All of the staff who've interacted with the Year 12 have done so to the very, very best of their ability over prolonged periods of time. So certainly a moment that we appreciate 
being able to walk in amongst this community. And certainly from my perspective, I thank the staff who are so dedicated and committed here for every effort, every effort they make in supporting a Downland student and certainly supporting the cohort who are about to exit today. As a further acknowledgement, we will start with our foundational acknowledgement of country and I'd like to invite Corte Carmody and Albert Dinevo. We respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where we are now gathered, the Yagara, Gaibal and Jarawa people. We can recognise that this land continues to be sacred to them. We hail them as guardians of the earth and of all things that grow and breed in the soil, as trustees of the waters, the streams and the rivers, the ponds and the lakes, and the rich variety of life in those waters. We thank them for passing on this heritage to all people since the dreaming. We acknowledge the wrongs done to them by newcomers to this land and we seek to be partners with them in righting those wrongs and in living in peace and harmony. May reconciliation be more than a word, let it be action, and let country heal us as together we heal country. We can start the live stream now, sir. <laughs> it's one of the most daunting jobs on a day like today, and somewhat appropriate that a past student would assist. I'd like to invite Molly Fraser and Max Caulfield to lead us in prayer. We call to mind that we are the presence of our we are in the presence of our ever-loving God, and so we begin this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Creator God, we give thanks for the wonderful gift of life, with all its joys and responsibilities, its experiences and opportunities. We give thanks for our work honestly done, for our games well played, for all the truth we have learned, the good we have been able to achieve, and for the precious memories made. Help us to complete this year of our life and begin the new in the peace, the joy, and the courage of our being, which is your loving gift to all who will accept it. For ours is the spirit of family and a spirit of true friendship, formed by kindness and understanding, by compassion and mutual forgiveness, by gentleness, humility, and simplicity, by hospitality and a sense of humour. Keep us thankful all our days for our MSc Downlands education, for the wisdom we have gained, for the challenges we have faced and for the connections we have made with others. 
fortes in fide, so that we may be on earth forever and always the heart of God. We conclude this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you all to be upstanding for our opening hymn. <clears throat> Thank you. Please be seated. And if you could join me with me in welcoming Mr. Stephen Cook for the principal's address. Good morning and welcome special guests, parents, staff, students, and most importantly, the Year 12 class of 2021. I would firstly like to acknowledge Father Vince and the MSC priests and brothers who have shaped Downlands as we know it today. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. I pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging and I also acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have within the Downlands community. Congratulations, Year 12, on reaching this significant milestone and the resilience your cohort has shown during your educational journey, especially this year, which celebrates 90 years of education at Downlands and 50 years of co-education. Navigating the changed educational landscape with the Queensland Certificate of Education and the demands of internal and external assessment, while sitting in a space that could be only described as on again and off again due to COVID has provided a series of challenges for each of you across year 11 and 12. As a group, you had to cope with more than most and admirably survive the refurbishment of the Cus Kelly Resource Centre, which took away your year group space in year 11, plus also cope with the changing of your year advisor and team leader throughout year 11 and 12. Even though your journey through your senior years has been challenging, what we as a community have seen from you is the development of a very durable group of young people 
who are well placed to manage the many challenges you will face in the coming years. While leaving school now becomes a reality, it will evoke a range of different feelings and emotions for each of you. Some of you will be excited to leave school and begin a new phase of life. Some of you will think school has well and truly reached its expiry date. Some will experience sadness in leaving a place that has nurtured many of you for six years. And for some, trepidation in contemplating what lies ahead. For others, the joy and satisfaction of developing lifelong friendships, academic growth and success, obtaining vocational education and training qualifications, and experiencing sporting, performing arts, debating and cattle and sheep show team success will hold significant memories to be shared in the years to come. Irrespective of how you are feeling, you have all been shaped by your Downlands journey. The person you are today is a result of the connections you have made with other young people and adults within our MSC community. As an educational journey has many milestones and memories, the most powerful are those formed by relationships and special events. So let us briefly revisit the journey of year 12. Commencing in 2016 as a cohort of 106 students, the students were warmly greeted by Mr. Cadella, who would be their year leader for year seven, and Mr. Fraser as the team leader middle school. Significant events in year seven were Tradition and Spirit Day and Enrichment Week. In his magazine report, Mr. Cadella wrote, at Downlands you will never walk alone. When you feel you cannot walk any further, there'll be a hand to help. When you feel you can't talk to another, there is an ear to listen. When you think there is nowhere to go, there is always a chair to sit. Remember, Downlands is a community, a community of friends and family for life. In year eight and year nine, Mrs. Hetherington continued to draw students together by encouraging their involvement in social justice activities, building leadership through year eight camp at PCYC Bornhofen and encouraging participation in activities such as the Personal Interest Project, Caritas, Vinnie's Winter Blanket Appeal and the Christmas Hamper Drive. Your senior school years have been guided firstly by Mrs Weir as team leader senior school and then by Mrs McLeod. The white shirt journey commenced in year 10 with many new students joining the cohort and was shepherded by Mr Wright. Significant events during this year were the year 10 camp at Lake Ainsworth work experience and implementation of a school-wide Environment Matters initiative. Your, year, your journey through year 11 and 12 has been supported by Mrs McLeod, Ms Cartwright and Mr Cullen. Each of these staff have provided unlimited care, significant patience and imparted great wisdom. Not only have they supported you with the day-to-day -day challenges of being a senior student, but also provided you social growth opportunities and an insight into post-school responsibilities as a young adult. Each of you will reflect in years to come on that special teacher who has made a difference to your life. We thank all of the Downland staff for their commitment and passion to ensure our students are given the best opportunities possible. With the Downland theme for 2021 being family, Year 12 have certainly lived this theme and role modelled it to the rest of the school. I hope you have realised how talented, inspiring and resilient you are, but also that you've only just made a ripple in the surface. I encourage you to be change makers and ensure the next generation of young people are inspired by your actions, integrity and heart. Never underestimate the impact you have on the lives of those around you. Collectively, your influence and that of others have the power to bring about significant social change. Thank you for writing your chapter in the Downlands History Book. Best wishes, Year 12, for what lies ahead. That is the end of my part of the speech this morning, but we are changing the tradition a little bit. So this year being 90 years of education at Downlands, and 50 years of co-education, we've invited a very, very special guest back and I'd like to introduce her now. So the history of a school like Downlands is so important. Many students and staff have given so much for the college to be where it is today. In acknowledging 50 years of co-education and to share experiences from a past Downlander, 
I'd like to introduce our special guest, Mrs. Kate McLaughlin, class of 1971, to share her thoughts and experiences with you. To give you some framework of Kate's link to Downlands, Kate was a foundation pupil of co-education at Downlands in 1971. Without her, we wouldn't be here, and without her, her uh, cohort, we wouldn't be here today as a co-education school. Was a Downlands parent for seven years, with two children coming to Downlands, and her daughter, Hannah, was school captain in 2004. She had 10 years on the Downlands College Board, has been a teacher in Catholic education for 22 years in the Rockhampton Diocese, was assistant principal mission at Emmaus College, state panel chair for drama and study of religion, directed 22 school musicals and many community musicals. In 2001, left teaching for a life in agriculture and with her husband, John, ran a large beef cattle enterprise across Queensland and Northern Territory. So can you please put your hands together and welcome Mrs McLaughlin to the stage. Wow, there's a lot of you. Good morning, Father Vince, Stephen, teachers, parents, and most importantly, students. Thank you, Stephen, for inviting me to speak to the Year 12 cohort of 2021. I am a proud Downlander. I'm married to a Downlander. We were married in the school chapel. Yes, and we had, as Stephen said, two children here. My daughter was school captain in 2004. As a Downlands board member, I saw the highs and lows of many years. Today, I stand here representing the class of 71. We were the first year of the new co-ed Downlands. In 71, Downlands as an all-boys school since 1931 and Ursula's as an all-girls school since 1931 as well, decided to go co-ed in just 11 and 12. Mainly for economic reasons, it seems, School life changed completely for the girls and the boys and the teachers. A double-decker bus transported us to a strange environment, male teachers, some of whom had never taught girls before. Much of the content of subjects was orientated to the boys. Our perception was that the boys' educational needs were always superior to ours. We were probably not aware of this at the time as we had other less academic aspects of life to think about. After the previous four years of same-sex education, both boys and girls became slightly more distracted by the close contact of the opposite sex. Class became much less important than who carried your school bag to and from the bus. Social distancing was unheard of. <laughs> Education took a second seat. There was too much fun to be had by all. It was, in hindsight, a poor educational decision for the girls for, from St Ursula's. However, it can be said it was indicative of the times. Just like you, we were educated in a time of great change and challenge. As a group of Year 12 girls completing our senior, we were already an elite. 75% <coughs> of our class, who had begun Grade 8, had already left at Year 10. That was a societal expectation. Leave school early, get a job, get married. There were plenty of women's jobs then, typists, bank tellers, retail assistants, nurses, some teachers. It was a different time, many jobs requiring women to resign when they married. That had been so for female teachers well into the 60s. Society did not hold a great expectation for the education of women. 
So, in hindsight, we were very lucky to have had the education we did. And we have gone on to have successful lives and careers. You, the seniors of 21, are also living in a time of change and social disruption. COVID, wokeness, which I'm still trying to work out. And to be a religious person is not fashionable. Perhaps the advice from a group of women of our age is relevant. Be forever grateful for your educational opportunities. Never stop learning. Take advantages of opportunities offered to you. And most importantly, know that friends and family are precious. We do not consider ourselves unfortunate to have come to Downlands in 71. The reverse. We consider ourselves to be so very, very lucky to have those friendships that started so long ago. The shared memories, histories, friends to laugh with, to sing and dance with. You are the lucky ones too. You have found a home at Downlands that is hopeful and heart-filled, where you have witnessed a culture of faith and love in the daily life of the school, where all students have had equal educational opportunities. You have made wonderful friendships that will last a lifetime. 50 years ago, we were like you feeling as though we were on the cusp of life. Excitement, and to again use Stephen's word, trepidation, that little bit of fear. You are blessed to have your heart find a home here, to know that God is good. Choose well in life. How you choose will shape the person you will be in 50 years' time. What you choose, how you choose, and you will all choose differently. But the bedrock of how you choose is here. Your parents, your friends, your school. To conclude... I would offer a prayer for you in the words of Jeremiah from the poet, adapted by the poet Noel Davis. Together in trust, let you embrace the new day and all it brings. May you mould it, shape it, simply, joyfully, with care and love, and fire it with spirit. It will be your work of art, your gift to the day, your adventure, whatever be the claim. Amen. We, the class of 71, wish you well, class of 21. Be proud downlanders. Be true ambassadors of the heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr McLaughlin, for the honour of that address. I'd now invite college captains for 2021, Bronte Hood and Squalex Patalicio Farmasuli, for the address by college captains. Good morning, Father Vince, Mr Cook, invited guests, parents, staff, fellow Downlanders in the class of 2021. Thank you for the privilege of being able to address you all this morning. Here we are, the class of 2021. We have officially come to the end of our schooling. What a roller coaster it has been for all of us. We are all faced with the unknown and uncertainty of this year would bring. But now, here we are, 
experiencing the final stretch of our high school education. One last assembly before we, as a cohort, take our last steps out of Downlands College and into the next chapter in our lives. 2021 has definitely been fulfilled with ups and downs, being faced with unexpected lockdowns and the unknowns of COVID. Would it prevent students or teachers returning to school? To the first Twilight Swimming Carnival and the official plans to expand the school and introduce prep to year three in 2023. This year has certainly been a roller coaster and a new experience for everyone. Regardless, it is safe to say that every obstacle faced, there was a solution. With the unconditional support of the Downlands family, no matter how big or small the issue was, we as a community adapted and evolved to overcome these challenges. Over the three years I've been at Downlands, this school has grown and evolved in many ways, from the renovation of the boarding houses to the modern upgrades of the library, the partnership with FitLab, and so forth, demonstrate how the college continues to change. The renovations of the school might have given us the feel of a modern workspace, but it's the strength of the bonds between the students and staff, the real sense of family that makes Downlands truly special. The MSC ethos and values that Downlands stands for are imprinted within each individual, making the person they are today. What we take from the school has shaped who we are as people. As we journey forward from here, we will always be heart people who believe in truth, justice and love. The journey we have been on as a cohort has shaped who we are as individuals. This milestone is a major step in the journey of our lives, one that should be recognised for its significance. It is an act not only of personal commitment, but also one of Downland's pride. We have all as a cohort worked hard to get to this day. And our work did not go to waste. But graduation is not an end goal itself. It is instead a part of a larger journey of life. Wherever your future takes you, let it take you somewhere. Life is a journey itself. All accomplishments we achieve during its course should be taken as starting points for future achievements. Our graduation can be, can be seen not as an ending, but as a new beginning, letting us write our own story and the journey we are meant to take. Congratulations, Year 12, Class of 2021. Today, we move on to the next chapter of our lives. The journey we take will not be the same for everyone. It will be different. But as we all continue on our lives, let us take each new problem on of confidence, knowing that we have achieved great heights and are equipped with the necessary tools to tackle the challenges that we will face in our future. On behalf of Year 12, I'd like to sincerely thank the people who have given us this opportunity. Our parents, our families, our teachers, our friends, and our fellow Downlanders. Now, as we prepare to take our final steps out of the school, ahead of us stands the unknown. New experiences, new obstacles, new memories will be created. A new journey for all of us, a new beginning. Good morning, Mr. Cook, Father Vince, distinguished guests, parents, students, and members of the graduating class of 2021. I think we can all agree that the world that we have grown up in has become a very fast-paced environment where we often get bored if a TikTok is longer than 15 seconds and if the food is in the microwave for more than 60. It feels like yesterday we were learning how to ride our bikes around our neighborhood streets and now we drive our very own cars down those very same roads. It feels like yesterday we were taking those time multiplication tests, and now we have just sat our year 12 external math exam with more letters than numbers written on the page. It feels like yesterday our parents were telling us, you'll understand when you're older, and now we do. Life changed quickly, and I don't know if many of us really remember when. As the Qualic stated earlier, Downlands has evolved and expanded in many directions not just physically through renovations and new and improved facilities, but through our ever-growing spirit of family, friendship, and a true sense of belonging. Our journey here at Downlands may have felt short-lived, but the impact it has had on us as individuals definitely wasn't. 
but as we move into the next stages of our lives, life is only going to keep changing. And often we feel as if we were happier before something changed, safer, more comfortable. We became so familiar with the sound of bells which told us when to change classes and when to eat. And although it may take some time to adjust, life is ultimately all about being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Alongside the importance of learning to be uncomfortable, the Downland family has taught us an important lesson that I believe often falls below the surface. And that is the idea that everything and everything is temporary. The awkward transition between the year six to high school, the bad haircut, and the bad grade we thought that we would never get over, all temporary. However, out of all of these things, there is one thing that people tend to forget are temporary, emotion. The joy you felt when the substitute teacher walked through the door in year nine science, temporary. The comfort you felt when your friend offered you a bite of their lunch when you bought none, temporary. And the happiness you felt when you got two extra weeks of holidays at the beginning of the pandemic, temporary. I'm not saying this to bring the mood down, but more so as a reminder that life is full of temporary moments and temporary feelings. The stress you feel during an exam block, the guilt you feel after disappointing someone, and the sadness you feel when you're left wondering, where did I go wrong? It is all temporary. This stage of our lives, while temporary, has impacted each and every one of us as individuals and as a family, shaping the path we intend to walk in the years to come. The Downlands community has undoubtedly provided our journey with temporary emotions and temporary moments that will have an impact on us forever. So while this chapter of our lives may come to a close, the Downlands community has the impact the Downlands community has had on us as individuals and the legacy we as a cohort will leave will be forever enduring. Thank you to those teachers, parents and fellow classmates that throughout our journey showed us the true meaning of friendship and kindness, understanding and compassion and simplicity in all that they do. For opening in our hearts and making some moments not so temporary but forever lasting. So as we move through the next, through the next chapter of our lives, embrace it. Embrace the change and have little grace for yourself and others. Don't make irrational or permanent choices based on temporary feelings. Nothing lasts forever. So go out and make memories. Take chances, live a little and laugh a lot. Because at the end of the day, we are all temporary. But our impact on each other and the world doesn't have to be. Thank you both so much. <clears throat> we'll now present the Father John Mooney MSc Award for College Captains, Vice Captains and College Leaders for 2021. We'll recognise these individuals as they move to the stage to receive their award one by one. Please congratulate. Dramatic pause. Bronte Hood. Squalix Patalicio Farmasuli. <laughs> Max Caulfield. <laughs> Molly Fraser. Mia Bennett's. <laughs> James Casey. Cronk.
and Rachel Kirkwood. As Rachel moves from the stage, it is um, appropriate to recognise that the leadership that this particular group and the cohort of 2021 have led us through. Quite an unusual thing, never before experienced. And they've done a quiet but phenomenal job of that. So if we could please recognise the entire cohort of <laughs> And now please welcome Ms Sue Weir, who is going to introduce the presentation of Academic Awards. Good morning. Today we have the opportunity of recognising the success of the students who have completed Year 12 subjects. Since the introduction of the new QCE, and this co cohort being the second to graduate under this system, the awards ceremony today will be slightly different. Given that many students have recently completed external assessment worth either 25% or 50%, the college will recognise the Father George Butler MSc Prize for Ducks of the College, the Kevin Hanley Prize for Runner-Up to the Ducks, and the top student in each general subject after external assessment at an academic dinner on Tuesday the 18th of January 2022. The academic awards being recognised today are based on internal assessment results, which have been confirmed by QCAA. The Year 12 cohort of 2021 should be congratulated for their determination and resilience during their senior years of study, especially during a year of such uncertainty. I now ask Mr. Domenico Cullen, Year 12 Leader, to announce the Year 12 Individual Subject Awards. It gives me great pleasure to announce the Year 12 Individual Subject Awards. These awards are based on the um, highest level of achievement in each subject, and they're based on internal results. Jasmine Angus, Health. <clears throat> Mia Bennett, Geography. Holly Betts, Certificate 1 in Hospitality and Certificate 2 in Kitchen Operations. <laughs> Angus Brash, Certificate 2 in Engineering Pathways. <laughs> Claire Buchanan, Biology and Physics. Tom Butler, Design and Film, Television and News Media. <laughs> Chloe Cox, General Mathematics. <laughs> Max Caulfield, Mathematical Methods and Specialist Mathematics. Abby Coveney, Physical Education. George Daly, Certificate 2 in Construction Pathways. Tayana Eggins, Food and Nutrition. Be 
Petrus Groot, Business. Shakela Henry, Essential Mathematics. Bronte Hoot, Legal Studies. Hugh Kelly, Agricultural Science. Kyla Kenyon, Visual Arts and Practice. Eloise Ku, Chemistry, Literature, Mathematical Methods, Modern History, Physics, and the Study of Religion. <laughs> Jemima Ku, Study of Religion. Lily McCarthy Cole, English. <laughs> Amy McCosker, Essential English. <laughs> Josh Mankies, Certificate 3 in Fitness and Engineering. Matt Mitchell, Furnishing Schools. Unfortunately, Matt is un unable to be here, so we'll send that award to him. Taylor Lee Morris, Certificate 3 in Business. <laughs> Zakwalex Patelesio Farmasuli, Essential English. Willem Pinar, Certificate 3 in Sport and Recreation. <laughs> Chiara Puno, Legal Studies. Chelsea Reed, Certificate 1 in Agri-Food Operations and Certificate 2 in Rural Operations. Erin Ralph, Visual Arts and Practice. Nick Russell, Sport and Recreation. Kenna Squires, Dance. <laughs> Jacob Stewart, Economics. <laughs> Lillian Tate, Dance, as well as Religion and Ethics. Toby Thalander, Drama, Music, Music Extension, and Visual Art. <laughs> Let us once again acknowledge these recipients. Welcome the senior school team leader, Mrs. Karen McLeod, for the Year 12 awards for overall academic excellence.
is my privilege to acknowledge those students who have received 80% or higher in at least three general subjects. For biology, economics, English, geography, religion and ethics, Mia Bennett. <laughs> For drama, literature, music, music extension, study of religion, Victoria Brown. For biology, chemistry, English, mathematical methods, physics, religion and ethics, Claire Buchanan. For biology, general mathematics, study of religion, Chloe Cox. Chemistry, mathematical methods, physics, Religion and Ethics, Max Caulfield. <laughs> Literature, Music, Music Extension, Study of Religion, Harrison Costigan. <laughs> Chemistry, Economics, Study of Religion, Henry Cronk. <laughs> Biology, Food and Nutrition, General Mathematics, Tiana Eggins. <laughs> Engineering, Mathematical Methods, Physics, Matthew Gillette. Business, Literature, Study of Religion, Petrus Groot. <laughs> Chemistry, Literature, Mathematical Methods, Modern History, Physics, Study of Religion, Eloise Koo. <laughs> Chemistry, Geography, Literature, Modern History, Study of Religion, Jemima Koo. <laughs> Dance, English, Food and Nutrition, Religion and Ethics, Lillian McCarthy Cole. <laughs> General Mathematics, Legal Studies, Modern History, Visual Arts. Chiara Pugno. <laughs> Biology, Business, General Mathematics, Mahad Sahal. <laughs> Drama, Economics, General Mathematics, Literature, Religion and Ethics, Jacob Stewart. Business, Literature, Modern History, Religion and Ethics, Ashlyn Stiller. <laughs> Drama, English, Music, Music Extension, Visual Art, Toby Talander. Biology, Economics, Literature, Study of Religion, Charlie Watson. <laughs> Can we please again acknowledge for overall academic excellence our students. Fortunate now to, um, to have a song performed by some of the Year 12 students, Victoria Brown, Harry Costigan and Henry Harding. 
who um, aren't just academically gifted but also quite talented in the cultural spheres, please make them welcome. Clearly also technically gifted.
what you had and what you lost and what you have and what you lost. We uh, may show a little bit of appreciation for their technical ability as well in the pit stop we've seen up here. Quite remarkably, remarkably quick. So once again, thank you very much. And I'd invite the executive and school captains back to the stage. Please welcome once again Ms. Sue Weir to present the Vocational Education Awards. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to announce the Vocational Education Awards today. The first category is the Year 12 Award for Overall Vocational Education and Training Excellence. This award is given to a student for outstanding performance in a vocational training area. The first recipient, Lucy Adams. <laughs> Timothy Bond. Abby Coverney. <laughs> Lucy Doyle. <laughs> Credence Locke. Lily McCarthy Cole. <laughs> Amy McCosker. <laughs> Clay Mitchell. Lakeisha Pascoe. <laughs> Jordan Ryan. <laughs> Tilly Robinson. James Samuelson. <laughs> Reese Saunders. <laughs> James Wilkie.
The next category of awards is for the Year 12 Award for School-Based Apprenticeship Excellence. It is awarded to students for outstanding performance in a vocational training area. The first recipient, Chloe Cox. George Daly. Fletcher Da. Ned Stedman. The next category of award is the Toowoomba Catholic Schools Office, School-Based Apprentice of the Year. It is awarded to a Downlands College School-Based Apprentice or Trainee of the Year. For 2021, it is Angus Brash. The Tate Queensland Southwest Outstanding Vocational Student Award. It is awarded to a student for outstanding performance as a vocational learner. Timothy Bond. <laughs> the next group of awards are the University and Agency Prizes. The University of Southern Queensland, the USQ Excellence Award, for demonstrating a high standard of academic excellence, Jemima Coop. <laughs> the Queensland University of Technology Award is for excellence in engineering technology, Josh Menges. The Ampole Award, the best all-rounder. For leadership qualities, excellence, and contribution to the college across a range of activities. Eloise Coop. <laughs> the ADF Future Innovators Award for recognition of abilities in science and mathematics, Claire Buchanan. <laughs> the ADF Long Tan Leadership and Teamwork Award for leadership and teamwork initiative across a range of college activities, Max Caulfield. The Merrill School Achievement Award for demonstrating commitment to studies, Lucy Adams. <clears throat> I now ask Mr. Chris Oakes to the lectern to announce the special merit awards. Special Merit Awards, it's my pleasure to announce the following students who deserve mention for their perseverance and participation in college life, whether that be through application to studies, cultural or sporting involvement, service to the community or involvement in liturgical celebrations. So we acknowledge Victoria Ardevilla Bennett. Athorn. <laughs> T. 
Timothy Bond. Victoria Brown. Ellie Close. James Hunter. Rachel Kirkwood. Lily Licardi. Lakeisha Pasco. Brianna Tevitt. And Charlie Watson. I'd like to invite Miss Andrea Collins to the stage for the traditional college awards and invite also Mrs. Kate McLaughlin back to the stage to present those. Please make them welcome. It's my pleasure and privilege to announce the recipients of the E.A. Fitzherbert Prize for Study, Sport and General Culture, Molly Fraser. <laughs> and Henry Cronk. The Aylward Prize for Contribution to the Spiritual Life of the College, Amy Kuhn. <laughs> and Jacob Stewart. The Father John A. Ryan MSc Memorial Prize for Perseverance, Generosity and Cooperation, Claire Brophy. and Caleb Lindsay. <laughs> and 
and the Felipe Sambain Memorial Prize for community service, Grace Taylor. and Albert Dinevor. Can we please congratulate these recipients again? I now invite Mr. Ian Mendes to present the next series of prizes to be presented also by Mr. Stephen Cook and Mrs. Kate McLaughlin. The Aileen Doyle Prize for presentation, speech and courtesy, Tiana Eggins. and James Casey. <laughs> O'Shea and Thompson Visual Art Prize for Most Outstanding Student in Visual Art, Toby Thelander. Claire Booth Prize for the Most Outstanding Student in Performing Arts, Lillian McCarthy Cole. and Toby Thalander. Father John Tyler MSc Prize for Commitment and Participation in the Performing Arts, Harrison Costigan. Downlands Prize for Contribution to the Cultural Life of the College, Lillian McCarthy Cole.
and Thomas Butler. I'd like to invite Ian Balkin uh, to continue the announcement of further prizes. The Pierre McNally Memorial Award for Outstanding Commitment to the Downlands Rural Community Centre, Gabriel Sacon. The Glenn Slater Oratory Award was the winner of the Downlands College Oratory Competition, Senior Section, Claire Buchanan. Peter Birmingham Memorial Award for Excellence in and Commitment to Debating, Jacob Stewart. The Doug McIntyre Award for Outstanding Commitment to Fostering a Sense of Community Across All Areas of College Life, Max Caulfield. Liz Phelan Award for Outstanding Contribution to Girls Boarding, Lucy Adams. The Hogan Jordan Award for Outstanding Contribution to Boys Boarding, Max Caulfield. I call on Mr. Chris Oakes to announce the next award. It's my privilege to present the John Tyson Donnelly Memorial Prize for outstanding merit across all areas of college life. Please congratulate Mia Bennetts. and Max Caulfield.
please wait, make welcome Mr. Stephen Cook. Just before Mrs. McLaughlin leaves, leaves the stage, I'd certainly like to thank her for her time here today and her wise words. For us, the history of Downlands is really important and to be able to have that shared with us by someone who has walked the journey, not only as a student, a parent, but someone who's had a significant connection with the college is exceptionally special. So just as a little token of thank you, Bronte's going to present Mrs. McLaughlin with a little gift from the college. So thank you, Mrs. McLaughlin. <laughs> Humanitas Award. This award is in the memory of Ben Strong, Downlands College captain who died tragically in 2006. It represents the highest accolade in the college if we are thinking about goodness and the qualities the award is about, qualities that represent the perfect Downlander. History records that Ben Strong's death impacted so much on the college community, not just because he was college captain, but because of who he was as a person, as a hum human being. He had what we call in Catholic circles a certain joie de vivre, or joy in life, and he encouraged others to embrace every day as a gift to enjoy. Some of this spirit is captured in the old Latin term humanitas. It is difficult to translate, but it carries in it the meaning of benevolence and compassion, of being kind and humane, towards ourselves and others, and likewise, an appreciation of the good things in life. A humanitas outlook reflects humility, understanding, and a heartfelt concern for people. It recognises that we are not perfect, but seeks only and touches into the goodness of others, bringing out that goodness. Such an outlook manifests in graciousness and forgiveness and appeals to what is best in us. Ben had much of this spirit of Humanitas in him. Our recipient of the Humanitas Award for 2021 has indeed inspired us for their humility, integrity and goodness. From their very first interview, this person has shown they have a light in them that shines brightly and that their quiet determination will take them far. Being a natural leader, this person has been a role model across all areas of the college academic, co-curricular and social justice. They are widely known by staff and students for their kindness and commitment. This person is courageous and typifies the Downlands prayer. Win without boasting and lose without begrudging. They are tenacious and play with passion. They give all for their team, but, it, but they are the first to congratulate the opposition irrespective of the result. They make a difference through their humility and initiative. They see a need and act on it to make our community a better place. This person always has a smile on their face and a kind word for whoever they speak to. This person is authentic and brings to the fore many of the most important attributes of a Downlander. They're a great friend, they're kind, they show understanding to others, they're compassionate, they're gentle and humble, and have a great sense of humour. This is a young person who will change any team or business they choose to get involved with for the better. This person represents the best of a young Downlander, with their feet firmly on the ground, heart filled with MSC values that translate into inspiring actions, and one that values relationships. Both in sport and in life, she protects the goal and the ideals held by the MSC and Downlanders. The 2021 Humanitas recipient is Grace Taylor.
I spend a good deal of this presentation and this celebration looking for the first year 12 to start crying. I think I just saw it. Congratulations, Grace. This will bring our celebration today to a conclusion. Thank you all so much for your attendance. I'd invite you to stand for our concluding hymn. Thank you. Please be seated.